I was, we were supposed to write something about education, so I'm, I'm again the musician, so no idea about education. So I went to the dictionary and so said, what is that education about, actually? So, wonderful. I opened up the dictionary and the, uh, the definition of education in, a, in an official English thesaurus is the action of teaching somebody something in a school. So, <laughs> I'm not joking. Um, I turned the page looking for that bit where it continues and that and that and that. Well, the next page had something else. So that is the official definition in the English language of what education is about, is the act of teaching somebody stuff in a building. So I realized we have a problem. Then I started thinking about that, and I realized that, in a sense, that's exactly what it has become. So in a way, I'm repeating what Rob said before, but this is exactly the situation. So um, I started thinking about that and ended up writing this little survey, which I will summarize, I promise, uh, of the past few decades and what's been going on with what we used to consider education, which has now become a farce in many ways. But So, um, in the 60s, we had this wonderful situation where we wanted to take education away from those evil, elitist people that, you know, where you could only be educated if you were rich or noble or something like that, and make it available to everybody and added a few other slogans to that. So, education for everybody and all that. And we thought it's going to lead us somewhere absolutely wonderful. Well, it's led us absolutely nowhere. And uh, elitism in every possible way became like a swear word. It's like, oh, if you're elitist, you are, you know, you're right wing and you're a capitalist and you're here and you're there and, you know, the privileged. Everything which was about the privileged people became some sort of a swear word, which is an interesting movement. I mean, of course, many, many things in that notion are very, very important that they have happened, but it also led us to a situation where um, we have trained people over the past 40 years, I would say, in a completely, completely destructive way. So, if education has to be reachable to everybody, then it means everybody should be able to A, get a degree, B, finish a degree, then get a job in it. So, since um, anything which is remotely connected to the word talent or sensitivity or disposition is, of course, evil, because it's elitist, then we have to find a different way of making sure everybody can be trained. So if, they're not, if their sensitivities cannot be approached, then we have to find something that is the same for everybody. It's all about being the same for everybody. No? So what's the same for everybody? Stuff that you can measure, stuff that you can count, stuff that you can define. So we, we found wonderful ways to train people with these tools. If you do follow this and this and this and this rule, and you do this and this and this and this and that, even if you have absolutely no talent for this specific uh, job or notion or direction, you'll be fine. You'll never be very good, but you'll be all right. But it's not about being very good because that's elitist. So just be all right. No? So we became extraordinarily good in being mediocre. And that became the common denominator to everybody. Let's find a way to make sure the whole of society is mediocre, so nobody gets too good, so they're not elitist. Only those that understand the system and manipulate it. And so then we had this wonderful system developing of training people through measurable and definable um, criteria to make sure they have the widest common denominator possible, which is mediocrity. Now, since we have this huge mass of people that now all have a degree, we all have to give them jobs somehow. Now, so what do people do? They start specializing, because there is no time anymore to actually be curious about anything, because you have to you know, earn a living, and you've got the 400 billion other people that have just finished business school. So you have to, be, you have to specialize in something. So um, you mentioned this wonderful term. The Renaissance man has died with the student revolution, basically, because we don't have time to read anymore. We don't have time to be interested in anything that does not directly and practically give us something useful. So, don't read, don't go to the theater, don't travel. It's completely useless. You will not make more money if you travel. And definitely don't be interested in anything. Just go pick up one tiny niche of whatever it is that is your job. Um, specialize in that niche as well as you possibly can, till the point that you do it better than anybody else, and that is the key to success. And what is success? Success is uh, this great thing that we have been brainwashed to seek for so long. You know, it's, uh, it's money and it's possessions and it's power and it's a position and all those things that we can never really reach because the more we have of it, the more we want of it. It's a wonderful system, by the way. I mean, it works perfectly in making people go on working and working and working and then die. So, um, um, it's, a, it's a part of exactly that same thing. So, specialize, 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 get, get absolutely nowhere with it. 
Now, I have to tell this tiny little anecdote, which I put in my essay. I promise it's not going to get that long. I'm getting to the point. No? Um, so, uh, it's, it's about, it, this is briefly is about music. Um, there was, in the, in the 1980s, a, a professor of piano in the University of Indiana, which used to be a very important uh, school for, for music, uh, now it's a bit of a factory, but it used to be anyway, who one day decided to change the little sign on his room, um, which used to say professor of piano, um, because everybody became professor of early music, professor of electronic computer blah blah blah, professor of how to turn a chair from blue into red. So he just decided to write professor of music. Then nobody noticed, except one guy who told me this story 30 years later. And I think this man was incredibly innovative and incredibly sensitive and worried. About, he has been long dead now. Um, maybe better for him, because if he saw what's become of music, he'd be very, 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 very sad. Um, to realize that there is no such thing as a professor of piano or a professor of how to turn this glass... Uh, well, yeah. Um, it's, it's, we are, I mean, musicians, we are artists, we are members of society, we are members of a larger culture, we are members of a, a large array of different cultures. Now, point number two. Um, which is a result of this uh, whole specialist movement. I called my essay, by the way, The Age of Specialists. It's, it's, just, it's just one part of it. Part number two is, um, let's say 50, 60, 70, 80 years ago, varies in different fields, people used to define themselves through belonging to a collective of some sort. Um, it used to be countries and religions. We realized that's a really bad idea about 80 years, 70 years ago, so we stopped doing that. So we decided to find something else to define ourselves through. So we would be part of a great company, or part of a great movement, or a great party, or some sort of idea. And then at some point, the more that people had access to education, and to now it's the internet, and YouTube, and what all, not all these things that give people the chance to specialize so well, and people think, okay, now I can do all these things. I'm so good at this and at this and at that. I'm not going to define myself through belonging to this great prestigious collective that is, that, you know, it's a great honor to be this little element of a big collective. It's all about me. I am so special and so important. So even in music, if, let's say, 100 years ago, a violinist would not have a greater dream than to join a great orchestra because it was about the music, well, no, now I can, you know, I, can, I can play better than everybody else because now there is three billion people who are incredibly mediocre, so uh, everybody wants to be a soloist because it's all about me. And that, through that developed, this, and this is just a, a, a little um, example of the sort of transformation between collectivism to individualism where it became all about this beautiful word of self-fulfillment. Now, before the uh, American writers decided that it's a great idea to make money by selling books about that, it still existed, only that um, many, many years ago, self-fulfillment was something so um, natural and subtle in many ways that people derived it from very, very small and very, very uh, beautiful actions in their day-to-day -day life. People were happy if they could earn a living, if they were healthy, if they had maybe a family and were very content with that because it was, they were a part of, a, of this cycle of, of, of culture and of society. Nowadays, it's how am I and my individual self, which is going from here all the way to that wall, uh, can fulfill ourselves. So we're not fulfilled by being belonging to a collective, as we've established. Um, we're fulfilled by being special. So we came into this wonderful era of being of everybody trying to stick out and be as special as they can. So if you have a mass of specialists that are already specializing in one tiny thing, and then it suddenly be exactly the opposite started happening, you have to distinguish yourself from this mass of specialists because there's so many of them that if you want to be even be noticed, you have to be different. So it's not anymore about being good or honest or have any sort of substance, it's just about being different. So, you're surrounded by this. I mean, we have here somebody from the world of theater, somebody um, from the world of music. You have that in every kind of art, and actually you have it in every kind of part of society. It's not anymore about being good. It's about doing the most crazy shit just to make sure that somebody notices you. Right. So, funny enough, it actually, we ended up exactly where we started because sticking out is just as elitist as where we started out. Now, it's only that it's not anymore the you know, nobility, it's not anymore the privileged, the rich, and so on, and the well-born that uh, have access to education and to culture and so on. Now, it's all these uh, extremely mediocre and ignorant people that decided to turn education to a, a money machine, basically, that have, ac that have control over it. So we've replaced this with that. 
but we've gotten, we're exactly in the same place. Now, sticking out is not elitist anymore, it's a trademark. So it's a wonderful way of making sure you will not be forgotten, yet another extremely important goal to aspire to. So, um, what is knowledge actually? What is education? I mean, we have, I think we live in a, a time that if people describe knowledge or uh, see knowledge as information. So I want to know something about something, I go on Google or on Wikipedia and read the first line and a half, if I'm very curious, two lines, and then I really master the subject. I've known all about Leonardo by having read where he was born, where he died, and that he painted this one really famous painting. What was her name again? Well, that one. So that's all you need to know. You're done with that subject. So that's, that's the, the same symptom of this whole specialist thing. And I personally strongly believe that knowledge is about an identity, and it's about a cultural identity to start with, and it's not about actual information, it's about making connections between different kinds of information, between different kinds of observations, between different kinds of experiences. And I'm going to finish all this with coming back to what both of you have said. Um, we have educated people over the past decades to know more and more facts that make it more and more possible for them to be very successful in a specific field to a very high degree of specialization, so on, what I've already described. But we have completely abandoned the notion of making it, empowering people to become humans, which is, for me, first and foremost, the act of questioning. We're giving people masses and masses and masses of facts and of information and say, this is the truth, this is the truth, this is the truth, you do this, you get there, you do that, you get here. But I think the only way to get anywhere is to doubt. We have to question all these things that we know and make sure the next moment that we are absolutely sure we don't know anything at all. Then we maybe made one centimeter of, of progress. So if we ever go anywhere with this whole act of individualism or what I call pseudo-individualism and turn that into real individualism, that would be about learning how to question our own identity, question our knowledge, and maybe then make a tiny little bit of progress by realizing how little we know and not how much we know. That's a little bit for me. Thank you. <laughs>